Continue with the Descent Comms collection, I'm up to number 29. So leading in from the last video, I'll be covering 23 to 29. Like always, I will be referencing the previous videos I've made on this intel. So if you haven't seen them yet, I have a playlist set up, and you can find this in the description. Mobile Shade servers have been delivered to all rural outposts, and the next shipment is due to roll off the assembly line next month. They will be installed at central hubs in all major metropolitan areas. You don't think that's overkill? It's a band-aid. You can never have enough band-aids in a war zone. Are you expecting us to be at war soon? I expect that Nat wouldn't be ordering so many warhounds if she didn't need them. And if she's getting ready for war, we should be too. Understood. This intel is talking about how mobile SHD servers have been delivered to all rural outposts. So my guess on what they were talking about in a previous comms about something to do with farmers and briefcases was somewhat correct. These mobile servers have been made en masse as a backup to the main network. They haven't just been distributed through major cities, but through the countryside too. It sounds like there is an absolute ton of these around. So why in the present day does it seem like there are very few of these left? The whole last season was about just one of these servers. just get one of my agents killed. Hello, Cal. Nice to hear your voice. How is New York? Alex, what happened? One of my agents broke into a pharmacy to get painkillers and bandages for a gunshot wound, and your AI marked her rogue, killed her turret, and left her defenseless. I'm sorry to hear that. She should have used a key. I thought your AI was supposed to be smart. My AI is smart. Isaac leaves much to be desired. I can't have my agents left defenseless, because Isaac is a boy scout! We have a workaround. Then do it! If I allow your agents to have full access to the system, even if they go rogue, you know what this means, right? Yes. Do you also want me to activate Stage 1 of the Hunter Protocol? That's the failsafe. Stage 1 only allows you to activate individuals on a case-by-case -case basis. If you want them all online, we have to move to Stage 3. I remember. Individual, regional, national. That's correct. Just do it. This was never supposed to happen. It wasn't, but I'm glad we're ready just in case. You weren't ready! This is a shit show! This? This is food poisoning. Just stay hydrated and pray this whole thing blows over in a couple of days. I don't need the sales pitch right now, Alex. I need your tech to do its fucking job! Okay, it's done. Rogue agents now have access to their tech, and, if one of them becomes a problem, you can activate a hunter to dispatch of said problem. Thank you, Claire. I'm sorry I yelled. This is just... this was not where I had planned to be when this all went down. No one expects to be at Ground Zero. But once you're there, you either adapt or die. Lucky for you, you've got an army to get through before you die. That's not as comforting as you think, Claire. If you need anything else, we'll be in the bunker. At least those systems are working fine. Thank Birdie for the power solutions. The defense systems are really impressive now that the power is stable. As much as I enjoyed hearing Cal absolutely lose his shit, there is some good information that has come through this one. The original protocols had the agents completely cut off from the SHD tech when flagged rogue, and this led to the death of an agent. This answers the question I've been seeing asked since the early days of the Division 1. Why are rogue agents still able to use their tech after they've gone rogue? It also talks about how limited Isaac can be when it comes to what is right and wrong, what is on or off mission. Shit, I should have gone rogue tons of times by now, just from the number of dares I keep punching alone. It's at this moment that I would have questioned the need for the rogue protocol at all, given how sensitive Isaac is. Think of the number of agents that have been screwed by Isaac and have been forced into hiding. A really good example of this is in the Division Hunted novel. Without spoiling anything, most non-rogue agents are in a position where there are so many super hostile rogues that they would rather shoot rogues first and ask questions later. It also talks about the Hunter Protocol. It is a failsafe for rogue agents. But it can't be all rogue agents, their numbers are too high. It's just for the ones who really develop a name for themselves. I wonder why one was never sent after Kina. The Stage 1-3 to three Individual, Regional and National Hunter Dispatch System is interesting. I wonder where we're currently sitting in present day. 
And if not national, why not? This surely would have sped up the job for Calvin and Natalia. Or maybe this is just Cal keeping all his cards close to his chest for now. We also learn that Claire and Alexander Ortiz were still alive after the outbreak. They have been holding out in a bunker. I wonder if these have anything to do with the Black Tusk bunkers. This is also the first time we should have heard about Birdie, if I had managed to stay up to date with my descent comps. The holograms are not working as intended. We need a more stable power source. Cal says he's working on it. I really hope that doesn't mean what I think it means. You knew that we would need to bring in additional funding and consultants. But not him. I can't work with him. I know, but if you want to get the new system into production, we need their help. Cal promised you can work directly with Birdie. You won't have to see Vic at all. I can work with Birdie. Other than the power supply, any other red flags from the field test? Concerned the AI might be too sensitive and quick to marking the user off mission and removing access to the tech. <sighs> Is there an easy win there? Yeah, we mark them off mission, but don't kill their access. We alert other users to a potential threat, but in case the AI is just being... touchy, we allow the user to still have access to their tech. Hmm. Visual and auditory alert? Yeah. We'll change their UI to red, and Isaac will detect the status change and alert surrounding users. We'll suck for people who are colorblind or in certain lighting conditions, but the voice backup should alleviate that issue a bit. It's not perfect, but... It's better than killing someone's tech in the middle of a firefight because you accidentally shot a friendly or broke a door lock to get to cover. Isaac can be a little didactic in his morality. This is why I prefer Anna. We already knew that these comms weren't playing out in order, and this one is from quite early on before the outbreak. Vikram and his sister, Birdie, are being brought in as consultants to assist with power stability. He is certainly hated by the entire franchise apart from Birdie. I've had a lot of people comment on where Birdie suddenly came from at the end of the last manhunt. To be fair, Vic sort of just appeared too. Yes, he screwed us over early on, but we really didn't know anything about him back then. Here we can see that Vic, the CEO of Odea Tech, contracted out power solutions work alongside his sister, Birdie, and they were actually involved with setting up parts of the Isaac system right at the beginning. Since then, Vic obviously made some dumb decisions and went back and forth screwing over different people, while Birdie seems to have just stuck with Homeland Security work eventually moving over to Natalia's operations through Cal's relationship with her. We also find out that they had concerns way back then about Isaac marking agents' as robes too easily and that they'll have no access to their tech. But for some reason, they didn't follow this up with Cal. Thank you for organizing the testing facility and granting access to Birdie. She really does have a brilliant mind for this kind of work. Happy to be of service. I'm honestly surprised how hands-on you are with this project. When only a handful of people have the clearance to support it, you have to hold more hands. My hope is to make that a little easier for you. Oh? I'm working on a new program that will completely automate the simulation and training for your operatives, and make it easier for Birdie to do her work independently. Anything you can do to make this project go smoother with fewer hands on deck, the better. And whenever you finish those upgrades Nat is paying for, I would be happy to inherit any of her old and surplus toys. This quick comms talks about the simulation Claire has developed. She is creating a program that will automate everything to make things easier for operative training as well as for Birdie to continue her work. There isn't too much to dissect here, but it's certainly building towards the story of what Descent Mode is all about. How did it go? Terrible. They hated my idea. Oh, don't worry. It's not just you. They hate all ideas except their own. Birdie? Birdie doesn't count. She's like some kind of savant or something, and honestly, I think she's just so birdie that it's easier to get out of her way and let her do whatever crazy-ass thing is in her head. It's not fair. No, it's not fair. But a lot of things aren't fair. It's a solid idea, but I need their money to build the prototype. What's the pitch? Terrestrial firebomb. Why? Original concept to deploy into forest fires to do control burns so that we don't have to use a smoke jumper. That's a good idea. But too philanthropic for this bunch. Find a combat application, and maybe. I gave them a combat application, but they said it was too war crimey. 
They've got automated drones. How is this any more war crimey than the shit they already have in development? It was their idea, so of course it's beyond reproach. Ugh, I hate rich people. Here we have Vivian Conley after pitching an idea to Ortiz Robotics. This was obviously before they'd cancelled her contract. Honestly, Vivian terrifies me with how much she's into fire. No wonder she was so at home with the cleaners later on. I mean, firebombs? Really? Like napalm? How would she think this was a good idea for Homeland Security? Nothing screams save what remains like napalm. I do like the comments from the NSA analyst about Birdie though. This kind of confirms a number of things I said about her in The Last Manhunt. A genius in her field, but struggles with the social interaction side of things. Trust me, Cal will buy if we use Isaac. What's the problem with Anna? He's a good old boy. You saw how the subjects responded to the prototype? Openly hostile towards having the female AI tell them what to do. Yeah, I remember. It's ridiculous and sexist and utterly disgusting. It is. But we know that, and if we want to keep funding the development of the tech, we need to secure this contract. And Isaac, Isaac will secure the deal. You only like him because he's you. And you prefer Anna because she's you. Jumping back way before Isaac had been chosen, Claire and Alexander Ortiz discuss the voice that will be given to the AI system they're developing for Calvin McManus. Regardless of what early subjects have said, I get the feeling that Alexander, the salesperson in this relationship, would have likely persuaded Cal in the direction of Isaac anyway. It's kind of funny them saying that people didn't want to listen to a more edgy female AI over something like Isaac, when all I see are comments saying that they wish they could have Anna. I kind of wish my Alexa had the option to turn up his sassiness. Obviously this is nothing on Brandon Keener, the voice behind Isaac. He probably has the most iconic voice in the whole franchise. I want you to equip all our personnel with this new Ortiz tech. You mean the operatives in the field? No. I want you to equip all our personnel. You don't think that's an invasion of privacy? I don't know what you're talking about. The new Isaac tech is supposed to be able to access and data mine all surveillance equipment and recording devices it comes into contact with. Yes. Our personnel are often in civilian spaces, like restaurants and banks and theaters. If they're wearing this tech, anyone they come into contact with will have their data uploaded to Isaac's system if it actually does what they promise. Exactly. You don't believe the tech works as intended? I don't believe and trust in the word of a salesman who barely graduated. I don't want to trust in a belief. I want to see test results that confirm if it's snake oil they're selling. If it's bullshit, I want to know. Will you cancel the contract if we find the tech doesn't work? Of course not. If I don't spend my budget, I lose my budget. Gotta keep the wheels of Congress greased and ready to fund the new future of warfare. You mean security? Yes, security. If we have this tech, it's only a matter of time before enemies do. Honestly, I hope it's bullshit. Otherwise, all our secrets will be for sale to the highest bidder, and the government's pockets are not that deep. This one is interesting. Before the outbreak, Cal instructs an NSA analyst to roll out the new Ortiz tech to all personnel. We've discussed the terrifying aspects of what Isaac can do out in public previously. This is obviously from before this comms, because Cal is now more than aware of what it's capable of. But what's interesting is that Cal never actually expected the tech to work. This whole exercise was about spending budget and politics. He needed to spend the money or he'll no longer receive the money. And as the Secretary of Homeland Security, he needs to show that he is constantly on the edge of the future of warfare. Cal even goes on to say that he hopes it doesn't work, because it wouldn't be long before the enemies would also develop it. And here is where I should start some rumours about other countries, having watched the Isaac, Anna, and the non-AI Diamond program roll out, and have started developing their own. The Division 3 includes a new hostile faction with Russian or Chinese origins, and they wield a very similar looking tech. Hmm. Natalia is the daughter of a Russian oligarch. I wonder how much political influence that gives her in the motherland. Like I said at the beginning, I now have a playlist set up for all of the Descent comms. This includes the commentary free versions too. I've noticed a lot of you seem to like these as a reference point, so I'll be uploading the next 10 when I've collected number 30 next week. What do you think of this batch? 
Do you think there's anything I may have missed? Let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this and found it interesting. And extremist malice, extreme media. <laughs>